Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be replacing the factory timing chain tensioner in my 2002 Honda S2000. So first let's just kind of visualize what we've got going on with our engine. So here of course we have our engine block, our crankshaft is going to be down here, and there's a timing chain which will match up with this idler gear up at the top. So that'll go from the crankshaft up here and back down. Now this is going to have some connections to some additional gears which will drive both of your camshafts, so your exhaust and your intake. Now the timing chain tensioner is going to be pushing in on a tensioner arm right here which is going to be pressing up against that timing chain which is running up and down. Now over time two things start to happen uh, with your timing chain and with your timing chain tensioner. First of all the chain stretches out so you know this car's got 105,000 miles on it um, and it's you know 14 years old so the chain is stretched out over time. They're not meant to last forever uh, though they are a very durable chain so they do last a good long time. So as that timing chain stretches out it not only makes it more difficult for it to keep tension uh, but it also means that the timing between your crankshaft and your camshafts is going to be slightly off. Now replacing it uh, with this Ballade Sports uh, timing chain tensioner which I'm going to be using here in this video uh, it won't correct for that timing chain stretch. They make a timing gear, that's what this is right here, uh, to compensate for the stretch of the chain uh, but regardless if you want to do it the absolute right way you'd want to replace the chain entirely. Now this will compensate for it and it's a much easier job replacing this uh, than replacing the chain. So as that timing chain stretches, um, basically what this does is it pushes out this cylinder right here like you can see on this one. This cylinder pushes out and it maintains that tension in the chain. Um, so this has a pin in it so once you install it you remove this pin and that uh, will, will pop out. Now what happens over time there's a worm gear inside of this that starts to wear down and it doesn't hold quite as much pressure on that timing chain and as that timing chain stretches out uh, that means you need to hold more pressure on it and more tension and so as a result you'll start to hear it rattle in there and so that rattling is the sign that you can know that this thing is starting to go bad and basically on mine the only time you'll notice the timing chain rattling is if the engine's really hot so you, if I've been driving a good while and it's hot outside and I'm just sitting there and letting it idle you'll hear it uh, rattling around in there when it's cold it doesn't seem to do it um, but I've read quite a bit you know people saying hey once you start to hear it you really want to replace these things so this is an aftermarket solution um, this is a bit more expensive it's about twice the price of the factory version but it does come with a lifetime warranty um, and I have read you know a decent amount of people saying they've had these and not very long after uh, they've already started to fail you know 20,000 40,000 miles on them and they've got to replace them again now there is a way you can remove the worm gear from the inside of this and you can sand that down or sandblast it and essentially that will kind of restore it to back to its factory properties and it will continue to work um, so that's basically the cheapest solution out there uh, but this is a good option it's going to apply a little bit more tension and basically uh, the reason why you might want to do this it's going to come with a lifetime warranty you're not going to have to think about it and it's going to be better if you do want to supercharge or turbocharge the car it's going to maintain more pressure so you don't have to worry about that timing chain skipping so here we have the factory timing chain tensioner and the way this works is there's a worm gear in here and so when you remove this pin the cylinder pops out and when it pops out it can only go this direction it can't go back in so it's always going to be maintaining that pressure um, and it's not going to want to move back because of the worm gear that's inside of this uh, so as that worm gear fails that means this cylinder can go back and that means your timing chain uh, can then lose tension and rattle around in there and so there are a few differences between this and the Ballade Sports version um, there's a few more oil ports on this one than you'll find on the Ballade Sports but uh, this little oil feeder right here is a bit smaller than on the aftermarket solution and you also have this little oil squirter right here that sprays onto the tensioner arm inside. So here's the Ballade Sports version um, you can see a larger oil port for the oil to go in there and it also does have that little squirter right there to spray oil on the tensioner arm. Other than that it is a pretty similar design they've also used um, stiffer springs inside there so the springs will maintain a bit more tension. Uh, I'll show a picture you know showing the difference between the two once they're disassembled. Um, you can see the different springs they use and the different assembly of the internals. 
Now, one of the things I didn't see explained online was when you're removing this timing chain tensioner, whether or not you have to ensure that that piston is pulled back by using a screw like they've done on this Ballade Sports version, um, or if you can just simply remove it. And so the way I'm gonna find that out uh, is I'm gonna pull this pin. Now, if you were replacing with a factory version, you wouldn't wanna pull this pin because you wanna stick this in the vehicle before you remove it, um, or you'd have to do this other option where you put the five millimeter screw, you screw that back in and that makes sure that this piston can't move out. So I'm gonna pull out this piston, or this uh, pin right here, we'll see what happens and see if it's actually something that we can remove without making sure that that piston is secured when we're pulling it out of the vehicle. This is also something you wanna be very careful with that you wouldn't drop inside of your engine uh, when you're using that little access port. Okay, you know, it does come right out. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to be careful removing it for sure, but it seems like just simply unscrewing it, uh, it's not just gonna shoot out into your engine. Um, so you can just unscrew the two bolts that are holding it in, which will be you know, up top here and here. And then you'll just be able to slide it out slowly, carefully to make sure that this doesn't fall within your engine. Um, but it doesn't look like it should be any trouble. So here's that worm gear I was talking about, uh, which will start to wear down. And perhaps I'll pull out mine and we can compare it with this brand new OEM version and see if there's any differences. Honestly, they don't look too different at all, um, but you do see a little kind of shininess, a little wear uh, perhaps, um, where this thing starts to rattle around, causes the timing chain to rattle around in there without enough tension. So the first thing we're gonna do is get this air filter box out of the way. Now this isn't really necessary to remove um, unless you're installing the OEM tensioner. And in that case, there is an excess port uh, right here to remove the pin on that OEM tensioner. And so you probably will need to remove this uh, if you're doing the OEM solution. Uh, the tensioner is located right here and you know you can get in here, um, but I'm gonna be removing this just so that we can get a better view of it and see what's going on. So in order to remove the air box, it's pretty simple. You've got three bolts holding it down, two here on the left side and one here on the right side. And then you're just gonna wanna make sure you remove any of these hoses or electrical connections, uh, detach those so that you can get this out of the way. Okay, so now we have a great view and great access to our timing chain tensioner, which is located right here. And then you've also got this maintenance port right here. So if you do install the OEM style, this is what you'll be uh, unscrewing. And then you can pull the pin from that OEM style TCT uh, right out of this hole right here. Okay, so to remove the old tensioner, there's just two bolts, one here on the right and then one here on the left, which you probably won't be able to see, uh, but they're both 10 millimeters. And I'm going to put a towel uh, just below it, just because there's probably gonna be a little bit of oil that's gonna drip out. And then we'll remove those bolts. That other one is a little bit more difficult to access uh, but you shouldn't have any problem getting in there and getting it out with a short extension for a 10 millimeter. So it's kind of come loose, but there are two of those O-rings in there which kind of make it difficult to pull out. Now, if you can't remove it by hand, uh, there's a couple different options you have. There's this bolt right here, which you can remove. That gives you access to inside, and then you can just kind of push it out. Um, I'm just gonna take a C-clamp and clamp it down to the outside of this. Uh, and then just pull on my C-clamp and see if that'll work to get it out. So, probably be a little more careful than I was, a little more delicate, but our pin stayed in, so that's the good news. We've got that cylinder right there. Out with the old, in with the new. So before we put our new one in, uh, you're gonna wanna get a little bit of oil and put that on these O-rings uh, so they go in nice and smooth, don't snag or anything like that. And you also wanna make sure you leave this wing nut and this five millimeter bolt on there, that's what's holding this piston in. Uh, so if you remove this, this shoots out. So we wanna put it, install it uh, with this still on there. And there's only one orientation that this can go. So if you get it wrong the first time, just turn it 180 degrees. Now this piece here should install very simply. It shouldn't take a whole lot of effort to push it in. Basically the only resistance you'll have are those O-rings uh, and you've oiled them. So it should go in real smoothly. If you do have resistance to getting this in, uh, that means you've got tension in the chain right there. And so what we're gonna do is you're gonna rotate the crankshaft, which is right here. Um, you know, you wanna have it in neutral. Uh, you can set the parking brake so this isn't moving around. And then you're gonna rotate this clockwise. Go maybe 90 degrees, you know, you can use a breaker bar on that, turn it about 90 degrees, um, and then try again. Uh, but basically you want that loose tension in the chain when you slide that in. 
So once we've got that in, we can put our two bolts back in. Now remember that we're screwing into an aluminum block, so these don't take much torque. Uh, the spec is 12 newton meters or 8.7 pound feet. So use a torque wrench um, and make sure you're not over torquing these so you don't damage the block. Now at this point, if you had installed the factory version, you're gonna remove this bolt right here, and then you're gonna have access to that pin that's holding the cylinder in, and then you're gonna pull that pin out. On this version, uh, we're not doing that. This bolt right here is torqued to 22 pound-feet, or 29 newton meters. Now on this Ballade Sports Tensioner, our next step is to undo this wing nut here. Then you can remove the five by 0.8 millimeter uh, screw there using a eight millimeter socket. And that is going to place tension. So now it's going to have tension on that chain guide. Next, we're going to replace that screw we just removed with this banjo bolt here. You can see it has a hole in it to allow for oil to flow through. And this is gonna be tightened to four pound feet or five newton meters. And the final thing we're gonna do before putting everything back together, you're gonna to put this cover back on the Ballade Sports timing chain tensioner. So you've got uh, two screws here. These are also going to be to 8.7 pound feet or 12 newton meters. So we'll go ahead and put that cover on. And again, you do wanna get a little bit of that motor oil, 10W30 in the case of the Honda here, and put that on that O-ring, uh, that gasket there, so that it doesn't get damaged. Okay, so at this point, we're pretty much done. So all we've gotta do is put everything back together. Uh, you know, remove all the towels, make sure you get all your electrical connections back where they were, hose clamps back down. Um, you know, there's some clamps that go on the air filter, uh, which you wanna make sure that those are all there on that air box. Then tighten down those three bolts which hold the air box down. Replace your filter and hose, make sure that's clamped down good on the throttle body. And put everything back together and then we'll go ahead and start it up, make sure that it runs fine. Okay, moment of truth, I'll go ahead and start it up. And so no rattling, sounds like everything's working right. Um, it's idling a little high because it's cold right now, but uh, yeah, everything looks good. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.